Hey, Game Makers! Are you new to the RPG Maker world and maybe kind of sort of want some kind of idea of what you're actually doing? If so, I happily welcome you to Echo's Beginner Tutorial Series! And if you're a hardcore RPG Maker veteran, well, feel free to sit back and enjoy remembering all the noob things you used to do when you were just starting out. And if you have any early game making stories, I'm sure we would all love to hear them, so make sure to post them in the comments. First, we're going to take a look at self switches since they're the most straightforward. If you right-click on your map and go to Quick Event Creation and Treasure, it'll create a treasure box. It uses self-switches, so it's a good default example to see how it's supposed to work. Now, what are self-switches? Specifically, they are a switch that only applies to the event it's used on. We're going to create our own self-switch example. Let's start by creating an event, setting the character image, and giving them some text. Now, inside the event, open up the event command. And under Game Progression, you'll find Control Self Switch. You'll have the options of A, B, C, or D. Because there are only four options, you'll only be able to use up to four self switches on the same event. We're going to use Self Switch A, make sure we're turning it on, and click OK. Now, to save time selecting the NPC's image and face graphic, we're going to copy the event page, then paste it. This will create a page 2 that will have all of our previous eventing on it. This is going to be the page we go to after our Akira NPC stops talking to us, so under Conditions, make sure Self Switch is set to A. Now we're going to change her dialog and make her say something different. And also remove the Self Switch call under her page 2 text, as it's already on and isn't needed anymore. Now we're going to click OK and test it! The first time we talk to her, she'll display page 1's text. The second time will be page 2's. Since the self switch is on, she'll continue to say page 2's dialogue unless we change it again, which we are conveniently going to do now! Let's head back to her event and add a new self switch under her page 2 text, this time self switch B. We're going to copy and paste the page again, creating a page 3. Make sure this new page is set to show when self switch B is activated. Now you can remove the unnecessary old self switch command under her page 3 text, and let's make her say something different again. When that's done, click OK and let's test play it! Now, when I go to talk to her, I'll be able to get three different sets of dialogue. If you wanted to, say, loop NPC text, all you would have to do is turn off all of your self switches under the very last line of text on the last page. This would make it so it would go back to the very first page afterward. Now we're going to look at normal switches. These are usually used to turn on and off multiple events, and have several other uses as well. For now, we're just going to focus on turning things on! Let's create another event and throw in a character image just so I have someone to talk to. Now this guy here, he's going to turn on switch number 2. Again, located on page 1 of the event commands under game progression. We're going to name this switch, Make It Dark. As for this example, we're going to use switches to control the lighting. Set that, make sure it's on, and click OK. With that event done, we're going to create another event. Now, I always put my scene-related events in the top left corner of the map for easy access, but you can put them wherever you want. For this event, make sure to set the trigger to parallel. And make sure to set this event to turn on when our switch is on. Under Conditions, select Switch, and change it to switch number 2, our Make It Dark switch. Now we're going to open up Event Command, head to page 2, and click Tint Screen. We're going to use this to change the screen color to dark. This will make it so when the switch turns on, it'll make the screen get a little darker automatically. Now click OK and let's test it! When we talk to the goggle wearing blonde kid, the screen will go dark. The screen will stay like this even if you leave the map until you change it again. We're not quite done with our lighting events though. Let's create another new event and have her try to change the screen to a different color. Now let's see what just happens here. If we talk to her, she changes the screen color. That's all fine and good. And if we talk to the boy, he's going to turn on the switch that changes the screen back to dark. Now, if we try to talk to the girl again, the screen will try and change the color, but fail and go back to dark. Now why is this? Well, we need to close off the switch event's lighting properly. As it is now, it's constantly rechanging the screen color. Back in our switch lighting event, underneath the screen color change, 
go to the event command, and on page two, under character of all things, click erase event. This will temporarily, keyword, erase its event, preventing it from continuously trying to update the screen color or whatever other effects you have going. But we'll restart again if you leave and return to the map. Quick note, only use erase event if you want things to temporarily go away. For cutscenes and things you want to permanently change or make disappear, use switches, self switches, and variables instead. Now let's test this, shall we? Now, whether the switch is on or not, the girl will be able to change her screen colors. If the switch is already on, then talking to the boy won't do anything. However, if you leave the map with the girl's screen tone and enter the map again, the switch lighting event will reset and make the screen tone dark again. Just to note, if you go and turn off the switch after the screen tone's already been changed, its effects will still stay until you manually change the screen tone again. We're going to make a short event using both switches and self switches. Let's create an event on this wall. It's going to be a lever. I'm setting it in a lower position like a light switch though. For this kind of thing, since this event can be accessed from three different sides, we're going to check off directional fix under options. This will make it so even if we don't talk to it from the front, the event won't try to face us, so the graphic will stay the same. In the event commands, page one under flow control, click on conditional branch. You can do lots of stuff here, but for now, click switch. We're going to make a new switch, switch three, called can use the lever. Click OK and make sure on next to it is selected. By default, create else branch at the bottom isn't selected, but we're gonna use it for this example, so click that, and then hit OK. We're going to go under else first. If the switch is not on, we're going to have the lever tell us we're not allowed to touch it. That's all. Now if the switch is on, we'll be allowed to use it. We're going to give the player the option to use it or leave it. This is under message and show choices in the event commands. If no, nothing's going to happen, but if the player chooses yes, we're going to change the screen tone again to show that we just turned on the lights. We want this to happen quickly, so we're gonna set the duration to zero and unchecked wait for completion. Then, add in a control self switch selected on A. I'd also like to say that the location of where you put your switches in events and whether the trigger is action event, parallel, or auto run does matter. If you want more details on this, I can go through it in more depth in a different video, and if you have any questions about it, feel free to ask me. Anyway, copy and paste the page. Make sure the new page is set to show on self switch A, and we're also going to change the graphic to a lever in the upper position. Lever, lever. Now we're going to remove all the previous eventing we did and give page two something new to say. With our light switch all nice and made, we're going to create a new event character. She's going to give us permission to play with the lever. And also turn on switch three, can use the lever. Now let's go play with levers. Variables, I'm gonna move to a different map since I'm sort of running in space. In the RPG Makers, variables can do a lot of different things. For today, we're only going to be focusing on a few of them. When it comes to game plot progression, I find it's much more convenient to use variables instead of switches. Some people use one variable through their whole game to control how far the player's gone through it. I personally like using separate variables per area or chapter. Just in case I screw up a number change somewhere, it's a lot easier to change one number out of 20 than trying to change one out of 200. Though, the newly reinstated event searcher makes this much more manageable. Anyway, let's create another character event with some text. Cat Ears here is going to advance our story. After its text, go into our event commands and then control variable under game progression. You can do a ton of things here. But for now, we're just going to select our plot variable, variable one, and select add, and enter the number one under constant. Now we're going to copy and paste this event page like we did back in self switches, and check off variable under conditions. We're using variable one, plot, 
and setting the number beneath it to 1. Like back in self switches, this tells the game that when the variable equals 1 or higher, it shows this page instead. Now we're going to change Cadier's dialogue. Using backslash v square bracket, the id of your variable, and the other square bracket, shown in text here, Cadier's is going to tell us what number the variable is when we talk to him. We're going to put the plus 1 back on the plot variable after the text is done, so it will increase the next time we talk. Next, we're going to create another event to show the effects of this. Every time the variable increases, he's going to say something new. Have no variable set on the first page. Have our plot variable set to 1 on the next page, and then set to 2, and then 3, and so on. Let's go have a nice little chat with our events, shall we? Tarase here seems to really dislike cats. Now when we increase the variable, he still doesn't really like cats. Now, Catboy will start keeping track of how many times you've talked to him, and so on. And now, at the end of the game, Tarase likes cats! Best game plot ever, I know, right? <laughs> Even if you increase the variables past the number your event is set to, it will still only show the highest page the event has until you specifically change it for any other variables or switches that get turned on. You can use variables for much more than just controlling your plot. For example, let's create a new character and have her tell us how many people we have on our team. Again, go to Control Variables. We're going to create a new one, Variable 2, and call it Party Member Count. Member? Member Count? Party Member Count. Let's go with that. Select that and click on the Game Data box. There's a lot of stuff you can do with all this, but for now, we just need to select Other at the bottom and select Party Members. Set that and click OK. This will set our current number of party members to that specific variable. Now we're just going to make a quick little text box with her telling us the number, and add in some events that want to join our party, and then let's test it out! Good! There's just one more thing to add to that. As Sadie here nicely told us, we had one people in our party. Yep. One whole people! So instead of calling us a people, let's make her say something different when there's only one character in the party. Let's go back to Sadie's event, and after the party member's variable, but before the text, let's add in a conditional branch again. This time, make sure to select our party member's variable. Make sure it's set to equals and change the number to 1. We're also going to want to set an else command, so make sure that's checked off too. Now, we're going to write in some text that sounds more applicable to only having one character on the team. We can actually specify this a little bit more. Underneath else, set up another conditional branch. Use the same party members variable, except this time we're going to set the number to equal 4. So she'll say something different if we have a full team. Write the text for that scenario, and then let's cut and paste the original text we had for under the very last else, so that nothing appears beneath either of the ends. This will tell the game, if you have one character, use this text. If you have four characters, use the other text. If neither of these are applicable and anything else is, use the other other text. That's all for that event. Let's just add in another character to join my party and let's test this. Sadie tells me I'm all alone. With two or three characters, she tells me how many there are. And with four, she tells me I have a full team. And that should be all for my Switches and Variables beginner tutorial. I hope you found it fun or informative. And if you have any other requests for tutorials, feel free to ask me in the comments. Until next time, later gamers!